What is going on One Piece fam? It is your boy Sean here and today we are taking a look at EB01 lists with EB01 coming out next week. Figured I'd review it and just kind of go over it because there's some decks that I haven't really taken a look at but we're just going to kind of take a look at some of the lists and see some decks that we've seen in the past how they've changed because EB01 is going to change up the meta quite a bit. So it's pretty exciting to see some older decks like I see Rebecca and Red Purple Law, which I know Red Purple Law is supposed to be really good in OP07 with EB01. So, so yeah, we're just going to kind of take a look. But again, if you guys are new here, please like and subscribe. I have plenty of content on the way, especially for beginners. Um, but yeah, go ahead and smash that like button. But let's go ahead and get into it. So let's take a look at Starter Deck 10 Law with EB01. So this is on One Piece Top Decks, which is the site to look for for some of the top decks. But yeah, let's take a look here. So it looks like we have a lot of the same cards with the Rush Zoros. It looks like this list that I guess won in Japan, the flagship placement first. So this is a top, let's take a look and see. But we've, we've got one Rush Zoro. We've got four of the Gordons, which they did re, pretty much reprint that. These two cards pretty much do the same thing. We got three aces, which is interesting because a while back, I know that a lot of people weren't running the rush ace because back kind of when Red Purple Law first came out, you didn't really play a lot of high costing characters because you wanted to use leader effect every single turn to get stuff out on the board. And it was really hard to get anywhere past like four or five dawn or like six dawn, depending on what, uh, depending on whether you went first or second. But I think with this list, the ramp is a little bit faster and more consistent. So let's take a look and see. But yeah, I think that Ace is a really good card. Um, I, and, you know, obviously it's big and white beard and set two. But it is a really solid card and it works well for this deck. It's just the fact that it was such a high costing character. That's why a lot of people weren't running it. But got three of those, three of the Sh Shariahs, which that card's really good. It's one of the newer cards from OPO6. We got Raise Max, which he's running three. So yeah, these two cards pretty much do the same thing, but they they make the deck far more consistent. So it's really good. And then we've got Kitten Killer, which is an EB01 card, which a lot of people are gonna want. Um, basically rush when attacking, if your opponent has two or less life cards, this character gains plus 2000 power during this turn. So if you play this and your opponent is at two or less life, it, it essentially is a four K it's a four cost seven K with rush. Like it's super good. So this card is going to be one of the cards that you want to look out for, for EB01. And then we've got the three Queens, which those are pretty staple. Like those have almost always been present in the deck. And then we got the four Eins, which again, ramps. So you want to run those, the Sachi and penguins got to have those, um, three Zoro Joros, which that card is pretty good. I know a lot of people. I think that this card is kind of hit and miss. Like some people run it, some people don't. I wouldn't call it a staple, but it, it if it's used well, it's used well. We've got the four blocker kids, which that is a staple. You definitely need that because being able to get a Dawn card back every single turn is really good. And then Reju's, which this is really good. It kind of cleans up your hand a bit. So four of those, it's pretty much become a staple in the deck. And then we have the Bond Clays. Now this is another card that you're gonna want in EV01. So on play, add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck as active, so ramp. And then when attacking, choose up to one of your opponent's characters. This character has the same base power as that chosen character for this turn. So it's really good, not just for its on play, but the when attacking is really what you're playing it for. So it's just, super aggressive which is funny because it's a purple card but yeah this is another card that like I, pretty much everybody's going to want to get their hands on with eb01 because it, it for good reason it's really good so and then we've got the sanji which when you have two or more sorry while you have two or more fewer dawn than your opponent this card costs three less okay so you can kind of cheat it out essentially had a hard time reading that because these cards I think are translated to English in this on this site so you can cheat it out 
for three or less if you have two or more fewer Dawn cards than your opponent, and it is a blocker. So if you're in a tight spot, you can kind of pinch it out, but it's also a 2K counter, so. And we're running just two Rad Beams, which I don't think I've seen Rad Beam a ton in Red Purple Law, but I mean, Rad Beam just in general is like one of the, might be the best Red event. I mean, it's just really good, especially late game it just comes in clutch so i mean obviously like in zoro and other red decks it's just you gotta have it it's just good security but uh yeah i think that this list overall is just way more aggressive i feel like this is just a way more aggressive build with kid and killer the ace and the bond clays it's just super it's very aggressive but it's also ramp so yeah um i'm either i might run red purple law i think that's kind of the deck that i'm thinking about running for eb01 um that or uh black yellow luffy which we're gonna look at here in a second but yeah i think this is a really solid deck i could totally understand why this would place first with the right in the right hands because it looks like it's got all the materials to handle almost every matchup so all right, guys, here we have the Black Yellow Luffy leader, which I've talked a little bit about on this channel. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't been playing it a ton lately. I played it, I think, like the first a lot last week. But these last couple of days, I've just been playing a ton of eight or uh, not a Sabo. I've been playing a ton of Red Yellow Sabo because a lot of people in my locals and just people I've talked to just have, have really said that have convinced me that I'd slept on. And from what I've seen, it is super fun. It's a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. I thought, honestly, Black Yellow Luffy was the only leader that I was honestly planning on playing, but Sabo is super fun. Um, now, Black Yellow Luffy is probably the strongest, and I think I've said this, I think I said this in my unboxing video, but most people will agree. It is the strongest just because being able to get your leader to 9k, and with Sabo, you don't really run, the builds I've seen, you don't really run the two cost character, you're just running the aces and the Luffy's. And you just really want to get down to zero life. And you really just want to take advantage of these guys right here and just playing the ace out, playing this out. But in EB01, what we're going to get is we're going to get this and this. We're going to get the Flampe, which I mean, again, is another card that everybody's super excited for. Because this card is going to make Black Yellow Luffy like a, way better than it already is. Like it's already good, but this card is just going to change it. So it's on play is you may add up to one card on the top or bottom to your life cards, draw one card. It's really good. And it's a 2K counter. So you have not only Machino, but you have this as well. So just being able, like imagine if you have that and you go second, you play Machino, you play that, you're already at two life. So you're already good to get ace out whenever you want to. So, and I mean, if your opponent's smart, they're not gonna swing at life because they know that that's how the deck works, so. But yeah, and then also we have, we also have the five cost Luffy, five cost 6K, which is an activate main. You may place this character in your trash. If your life is at two or less K up to one of your opponent's four or less characters, then draw one card. So it's pretty similar to these as far as activate main, you trash it but instead of playing something, you KO something. So it's removal. So it's adding a little bit of removal to the deck because I don't think this deck has a almost any, yeah, it doesn't really have a lot of removal, if any. It's just, it's very much just pushing, cheating things out and then just aggression. Uh, Yeah, no, it, it doesn't. At least, yeah, no, this deck does not have f removal at all. I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah. It's really just life gain, min, um, cheating things out. But yeah, these two cards make the, are gonna make this deck way better, especially this card. So and it looks like this list is pretty standard for the Hiyoris, which everybody is trying to get a hands on. This card has gone up in price quite a bit. And then yeah, just pretty typical starter deck stuff for Sabos. The, yeah, the only OP04 card in this list, the Garp. But this list, He's running four of the Garp and four of the three Brothers Bond, which I've been considering doing just because, you know, bricking, the, this deck does have a little some issues. You can brick with it. And if you don't see what you need to see, basically, like if you're at zero life and you can't cheat your leaders out, then you're kind of screwed. 
or cheat your characters out so but yeah um i think this deck is going to be really good i think we're definitely going to see a lot of it so it looks like this is a first place deck in japan so yeah this is the list that i think if i'm gonna play this or law this pretty similar to this i might change a few things up i don't know if i'll run four of these all right guys so here we have the moria deck which we've seen a lot of and like i've said in previous videos this is currently my favorite deck went five and oh first place japan um yeah pretty it looks like a pretty standard list because let's see uh except it's running the hina and the rebecca's which you've seen a lot more of but it's running two kuzan four tashigi four hina two helmeppo four suru it's running two issue that's a little different four brand new three sabo three rebecca two rob lucci only two and then four absalom four morias you gotta have them four hogbacks four peronas and then it looks like the only ebo one card is the two brook which is on play when attacking give up to one of your opponent's characters minus one for this turn then ko up to one of your opponent's zero cost characters okay so yeah i could see this card kind of giving it a little bit more it just adds a bit more cost reduction so it makes the deck a little more consistent and on play so it's an on play and when attacking so you can use it every single turn so but he's only running two so that's interesting and then two ice age and no great eruption i mean that's probably good because again it's getting banned so this might be the standard moria list moving forward like after june when Sok sakazuki's gone great eruption's gone but a lot of people have been running Rebecca and Hina moving forward, and I played it at locals last week. And there are some times where it definitely came in handy. So I can understand why a lot of people are moving towards this kind of build, you know, with uh, just moving forward. So this might be, I might change mine up as well and see if I can get my hands on two of those brooks. Um, the the only thing is the two Ice Age. I guess with Brooke, that does kind of help a little bit, but I don't know. I mean, I'm running four currently, so I would maybe maybe cut the issues or maybe get rid of, maybe cut the brand news. So, but overall, I like this list a lot. All right, and then next up, we have another mono black deck, which is Rob Lucci from OP07. So we're getting another black Lucci leader. So this one is when attacking may trash the top two cards of your deck, give it to one of your opponent's characters minus one for this cost. So more cost reduction, just a little different archetype. We're not running. It looks like it's kind of a mix of everything actually. Cause you know, you've got your Morias, which is standard, but you've also got some Navy in there. Got some CP nine, got some Sabos. And then these are the newer cards, the Kakus, the Yusufs um the spandolins and then of course the brooks and then we've got some well the any's lobby that's not new but these two cards seem to be new so i don't know a ton about this deck i've kind of just glanced at it and heard about it um on reddit and stuff but in the caliph okay that card's not new so it looks your pretty typical standard mono blacklist i mean so I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. I'm probably not going to run it. I mean, I'm probably just, if I'm going to play black, I'm probably just going to stick with Moria. But it's interesting. So let's see what these two cards do. So Finger Gun, you may trash the top two cards of your deck, up to one of your opponents. Five cost or less characters. Okay. So it's a little expensive. It's a four cost. And then Tempest Kick, draw one card. Then if your trash has 10 or more cards, give up to one of your characters minus three again just more removal and let's see what these cards do kaku you may place two cards with a type including cp from your trash at the bottom of the deck in any order give up to one of your opponent's characters minus three okay so yeah it's pretty typical cost reduction so it'll be interesting to see how this deck rivals with moria if it may end up being better which i don't know i don't necessarily think it will just because i think moria's leader ability is just stronger from what it seems but um who knows i could be wrong all right guys then here we have the anel eb01 slash op07 and yeah it looks pretty standard there's a couple of new things and we'll get into that but uh we all know what it does it just stalls out the game super annoying 
We got the four Shira Hoshis, gotta have them. Four Katakuris, which is interesting. I haven't seen, well, the Katakuri, I think is played more now in a Nell for obvious reasons than the actual Katakuri deck. So four is interesting. I haven't seen four in a minute. I know you have to at least run two or three. And then four Charlotte Linlins, which that I've been starting to see a lot more of. More people seem to be playing it. On curve, it's one of the best cards in the game. Um, but if you're not on curve, it's kind of iffy. But when you use it, it's really good. But I feel like as the game goes on, it gets worse and worse. And then we got the four beige, just insane trigger, of course, four Yamatos, four Gadatsus. And then, of course, the Flampes, which I think is just going to be a staple in most yellow decks moving forward. We've got a new Shira Hoshi. When this character is KO'd by your opponent's effects, place up to one card from the top of your deck on your life. So more life gain. And then it looks like we've just got a four cost vanilla Frankie. That's a 5k, but it's got a trigger and it's a 2k counter. So draw one. Then if you have one or less life card, play this card. So just more triggers essentially. And then we've got the five cost Luffy that we talked about with black yellow Luffy. So I think that's also going to be Maybe not, so, not necessarily a staple, but I think it's going to be pretty common. And then we've got this new 10 cost yellow ace. Let's see what this dude does. So on play, you may add up to one card from the top of your deck to your life. Then if you have two or less life cards, this character gains rush. Okay. So it's a pretty typical ace card. I mean, most, a lot of, the thing with whenever there's an, like a big beefy ace card, it just almost always has rush. But with yellow, it's interesting. We haven't seen a ton of uh rush yellow cards so it's interesting that they went chose ace for this but i think that this is going to be really good and then we've got the fourth thunderbolts which those that card seems to be making a comeback um i know like back in opo3 and opo4 it was pretty commonly used but people didn't really kind of stop using it for a bit but it seems to be making a comeback and then you're the one who should disappear pretty typical zero cost get plus three thousand and then rego KO up to one of your opponent's characters, then trash the top card of your life cards. Your life becomes one. Okay, so interesting. So your life becomes one. So that's an interesting... Um, so I guess you, you can use it whenever. You just have to trash to one. So if you play it at three life, you have to trash two cards. If that's right, I don't know if I, if I, if that's right, let me know in the comments. If it's wrong and you can only play it when you're at two life, let me know in the comments because that I'm not too sure about. But it's also got a trigger K up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost equal to or less than you and your opponent's total lifeguards. Okay, so yeah, a lot of triggers, a lot of triggers, but it's got the pretty typical yellow build it's got a mix of the big mom and a couple of the other like the gadatsus the flumpes but it's got some new additions as well so pretty interesting list i'm pretty excited about this card i'm curious to see if it'd be maybe playable in black yellow luffy all right and then probably the last one we're gonna look at is this foxy deck which is a new leader in opo7 i honestly don't know a whole lot about this deck um as far as opo7 goes i've just been i haven't been paying i've been paying attention but not probably as much as i should have and i've been focusing on certain leaders more than others like this leader i haven't paid too much attention to so i know what it is and when attacking dawn minus three if you have three or more foxy pirate characters in play, choose up to one of your opponent's rested leaders and characters. Um, then the cards you choose do not become active during their owner's next refresh phase. Okay. That's uh, quite a mouthful. So, but it looks like we got four Rush Kaidos, which that, yeah, that's pretty typical. Got four Captain Kids. We got two of, I'm not even going to try and, I don't know how to say it. Um, but it looks that 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 card's also pretty popular in red purple law. Um and then this guy, which I again I'm not gonna try and say. Um Capotes, Sanji's, Ginas, got four Tony Tony Choppers, four pickles, four foxies, four porches, four mandas, two Nora Nora beams two Megadons, and two Ragnarok. So it looks like this deck is a lot of OPO7, if not almost all OPO7, with the exception of this and this, these three cards up here. But other than that, it's pretty much all OPO7. 
So it'll be interesting. This might be the budget build deck. This might be the Bello Betty deck of OP07 because that deck almost played almost all OP05 cards. So, but it looks like this deck took first, or no, it took second, okay, in a flagship. It went four and one. So it's not as consistent as the other decks we've looked at, but it's interesting. It's probably not anything that me personally I'm going to play. The last mono purple leader I played was Purple Luffy in OP05. It was fun, but it kind of let me down a little bit. So, um, but yeah, this is interesting. This Let's take a look at this Foxy. So if your leader has the Foxy pirate type cards, all your opponent's characters have minus a thousand power. Then activate made, add to one Dawn from your Dawn deck and rest it. Okay. And then the Sanji, we know what that does. And the kids. So it looks like it's pretty typical ramp. Um, it's got the minusing effects. Yeah, it's got the gaining back. And let's take a look at these bad boys. So Ragnarok, which is a five cost. K up to one of your opponent's characters at the cost of eight or less. Okay, so that's pretty crazy. Um, Megadon, if you're equal, if you have equal or less Dawn cards than your opponent, set up to one of your foxy pirate type characters as active. Okay, interesting. And then Nora, Nora, Beam, Sword, Dawn minus one, give up to one of your leaders or characters plus 2,000 power for this battle, then rest up to one of your opponent's characters. And it's got the Afro Luffy. You gotta love it. Where's our Afro Luffy leader? That's what I want to know. That's the best thing to come out of that arc. Pretty interesting list. Um, like I said, in it'll be interesting to see how this deck does in the US. See if it becomes popular or not. But uh, yeah. But that's pretty much it, guys. I just kind of wanted to take a look and just kind of, you know, celebrate EB01 coming out next week and take a look at some of the lists, how it's affected the meta in the East and kind of predictions of how it'll affect here i'm sure it'll be pretty similar but we'll probably do a couple i don't know we tend to do a things a little bit different here like for example yellow seems to be really popular here back when black yellow back in op05 but um yeah i think overall i'm pretty excited for most of these decks i'm really excited for red purple law that's again that or black yellow luffy but again pretty much it guys so if you like more content like this please like and subscribe and uh we'll see you guys later